I found an old steering wheel thrown out by my neighbour. Since I recently had the urge to drive around in the form of a racing game, I thought it would be interesting to see if I could make this one work on my PC using only the things I had laying around the house. Let's take a look at how I did it. The steering wheel is a Sabre AGO8230 for the PlayStation 2. It's a pretty small, lightweight wheel with a good amount of resistance on the spring-loaded wheel. The wheel was thrown out on its own without the pedals, but using the buttons on the front I figured this would be okay for now. I could always add wheels later if I really wanted to. I wanted to split this video into three parts. First, the hardware. Second, getting the data from the wheel to the PC. And third, getting the data from the PC to a usable input to a game. The first thing I did was to remove the screws on the bottom cover. This allowed me to take a look inside. There isn't much inside, just a connector for the cables. The right side connector for the cable going into the wheel, and the left side which was connected to the PS2 connector, however this was already cut off. Lucky for me, the board had markings letting me know exactly which pin was which. The circular hole on the left of the base was where the PlayStation 2 cable came out. The hole on the right was for a 9-pin D-type serial connector, which only used 4 of the pins. This was for connecting to the pedals. Since there were no pedals with this find, I simply removed it. Continuing the disassembly, I removed the screws holding the wheel to the base, and then the two screws holding the connector board in place. I couldn't just remove the cable connectors as they were the soldered on type. Onto the wheel itself, seven screws around the outside, and with a longer screwdriver, the four screws in the middle came out. Splitting the wheel shows the potentiometer connected to the shaft. I can feel a spring mechanism inside here but didn't need to take this bit apart. Originally the cables were shorter. This made working with this quite difficult, so I extended these cables myself. The three wires of the potentiometer were connected here. The data cables were soldered on here. You may have noticed the extra white wire. This was my replacement of one of the internal cables being damaged. This wheel also has two motors for rumble. That's the inside, and apart from reconnecting some broken off and damaged cables, there was nothing left to do in here, so I put it back together. Taking a look at the cable connector again, I removed the cables that were cut off and soldered on a 90 degree male header pin. This would allow me to easily connect and disconnect the data cables for future maintenance. I found an old cable I scavenged. Other than the extra pins, it was perfect for what I wanted to do and soldered on some extra headers on the other side so I could connect it later to an Arduino. The connector slots nicely onto the header pin.
Following the markings on the board, M ground is the ground for the motors. This needed to be connected to the common ground. DSR is the data set ready pin. This will not be used. SCK is the clock pin. DTR is the data terminal ready pin. 3V5 is the 3.5 volt pin, but 3.3 volts works fine. 7V5 is the 7.5 volt pin to power the motors. 5 volts is also okay here. GND is the common ground. TXD is the transmission data pin. And RXD is the receive data pin. The extra two pins on the connector were not connected. Looking at these pins, it was clear the wheel was communicating using the SPI communications interface. Here is the other side connected to the Arduino. The pinout I used is shown in this table. With the Arduino connected, it was fully possible to hide the Arduino inside the base. But to get the whole thing working first, I decided to route the wire and keep it outside for now. Next up was connecting the Arduino to the PC. The lights on the Arduino and the wheel light up. On to stage two. I found the library called PS2X to interpret the PlayStation 2 controller to the Arduino. The library was written by Bill Porter. He has a website with information on how to use the library and why are the components. The library can be found on his GitHub page too, complete with example files. I've put a link to his website in the description. Opening the Arduino IDE. I imported the PS2X library. I configured the pins as I connected them and tweaked the rumble and pressure settings. I wanted the Arduino to print out the button and wheel turn state to serial. To do this, I created a structure where each button would be a bit value in a binary string. This would allow the button states to be sent in a single stream as well as make it much easier to interpret the data, as we'll see later. The analog values were written out separately, appended by a single letter to distinguish between them. A lot of this other code didn't need to be changed from the example. I commented out and removed a lot of the outputs as I did not want them interfering with my PC inputs. For the output strings, I set D for the state of all the digital buttons, A for analog for the position of the wheel, X for the analog pressure of the X button and S for the analog pressure of the square button. I'm using the pressure buttons since there are no pedals, but I could add other analog inputs to the connector board if I wanted to add some later. Compiling and uploading the code works successfully. Opening the serial monitor shows the inputs being fed to the PC in real time. And with that, stage two, wheel to PC is complete. VJoy is a virtual joystick emulator. It is perfect here for creating a joystick that the PC could recognize. The website has a good amount of information, including a download link. There is also a GitHub page. With the virtual joystick sorted, I needed a way to input data into it. I found a Python wrapper called PyVJoy, which I could use to input into the VJoy emulator. 
All the links are in the description. Coming on to the code, I used Python since I found the Python PyVDraw library, as well as its simplicity. I began by importing the necessary libraries. The readLine class is used as an efficient way to read serial data that the Arduino was writing. Configuring the COM port and board ray of the Arduino here, and then going in the endless loop of reading the data. The regex blocks were used to strip the leading characters from the data lines so I could separate the digital, analog, x and square values. On the Arduino, I read all of the digital inputs into a single binary word. This not only allowed all of the digital button states to be sent in one go, but VJoy actually uses this method to read multiple inputs too, so I didn't need to do any other processing here. The analog values did need processing though. I had to map the values as the Arduino outputs analog values from 0 to 255, but VJoy inputs them from 0 to 32768. Finally, it was just a matter of writing the values to the VJoy input. Running the script and opening the VJoy monitor, we can see this works pretty well. The buttons are numbered quite arbitrarily. Luckily, we can do something about that too. Xbox CE is another emulator that emulates an Xbox controller. We can feed the VJoy joystick into this emulator to remap the buttons. This is much easier to work with, but optional. Configuring the emulator, we can see the inputs work quite well with a more familiar feel. Let's configure my game input and give it a whirl. <laughs> 